Says hello, video lesson three. Uh, it's all about volcanoes and volcanic hazards and comparing and contrasting uh, a couple of different case studies. So, what are we going to learn then? Well, basically, how do different volcanoes cause different volcanic hazards? To do that, we've got to know how each type of volcano uh, forms. To understand how that formation then affects the different types of hazards, we've got to know and be able to describe and list the different types of hazards, uh, and then using all this understanding, kind of compare uh, two different volcanic eruptions or disasters, if you like. Uh, the first ones are Hawaii and Iceland. Iceland erupted in 2010. They're both shield volcanoes at hotspots. Uh, very different to your steep sided composite cone or strato volcanoes because uh, when they go off, like Pinatubo and Mount St. Helens, uh, a lot more violent. And obviously, my daughter in the background finds this hilarious. So, yeah, it could be a funny video, this. Uh, which bits of the spec then are we going to be? kind of link it, well it cuts across a few different areas really distribution, it touches on that I guess uh, what's happening at different plate boundaries to get the two contrasting types of volcanoes uh, what else does it do it touches on a bit of subduction to explain why we get composite cones and strato volcanoes and then definitely we're specifically focusing on the different types of hazards. All right. Right. As with all, as always with these videos, the objective is not just to watch them because I've told you to watch them and scribble down notes as fast as you can uh, and get to the end as fast as possible. It's a very immature way of learning. Take some responsibility, take some ownership. If you've got to play it back, pause it, do sketches, annotate stuff, fill in bits of your booklet, just do it properly yep right here we go Oops. right then we'll kick off with a recap distribution of volcanoes what do we notice Pacific Ring of Fire at destructive convergent plate boundaries uh, divergent plate boundaries like the mid-ocean ridges and hotspots such as Hawaii and Iceland. There are also others, but we're not going to get bogged down with that. If you just remember that general kind of distribution, uh, happy days. And the third point is we don't find volcanoes at conservative play boundaries. Right then. So, linking briefly, and I mean briefly, back to type of plate boundary. What have we got? Thanks back to the last two lessons. Convection currents in the mantle cause magma to rise uh, at mid ocean ridges. The magma rises through uh, kind of the basaltic crust, it's very thin, and we get uh, mid ocean ridges, or if those kind of volcanoes erupt and keep erupting and build up new new rock and new land above the ocean surface then we get uh, volcanic islands like Hawaii that's the first type shield volcanoes the second type is the volcanoes we get at our convergent or as geologists hate us to say this destructive plate margins where uh, mm, mistake on this one on this graphic i should have audited this before i nicked it off the internet yeah so oceanic crust subducts under the continental crust in the wadati benioff zone and then uh, it's partially melted in the asthenosphere so this crust partially melts gases are released pressure builds and the magma eats through the granitic continental crust uh, which is rich in silica we get that combination of gases and the silica content which causes a very different type of eruption and we get strato volcanoes 
or composite cone volcanoes. Very steep sided and very explosive. They go boom, 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 boom. Right, so sequence this explanation through. Oceanic plate subducts under, could be the continental crust or even an oceanic crust, but it subducts under where it partially melts in the asthenosphere because it's a lot hotter. When that rock melts, gases are released, pressure builds, it eats through continental crust, which is rich in silica, and then we get explosive, violent, steep-sided volcanoes. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, what are volcanoes then? Well, openings in the Earth's crust through which lava, ash, and gases erupt. Uh, and like earthquakes, you know, there's a definite overlap between where we get volcanoes and the relationship to where we find player margins. There, are, there is overlap. It's caused by tectonic plate movement, like we just discussed in the last video. Uh, it's the caused by pressure building up, hot magma and gases rising up from the asthenosphere to the crust. When it breaks the surface, it erupts. A little distinction as well. Magma, when it's kind of under the surface, referred to as magma, when it breaks the Earth's surface, we refer to it as lava. So a little distinction there. Uh, and the shape of the volcanoes is related to the type of lava erupting. So basaltic lava, which we find at mid-ocean ridges, for instance, and hot spots, is very runny. All right, And that's important because we'll get to that in a minute. It's got a low silica content and it's it's not very viscous, it's really runny, all right? And acidic uh, lava is richer in silica and that's what gives it its kind of explosive element. So basaltic volcanoes tend to erupt really what's called effusively or, or gently erupting, uh, but are more constant. Whereas andesitic volcanoes, like the one we're gonna look at in a minute, tend to don't erupt as often, but when they do erupt, they go boom. And rhyolitic, such as Yellowstone, for instance, if that ever erupts, then it's going to have global consequences. All right. So this is a bit like a spot the difference kind of kind of game here. You have got a page in your booklets uh, where you can fill this in, but it's kind of like spot the difference. And I've got a stack load of graphics here just to this. So. Let's have a nosy. Yeah, I think you've got, I'll show the page you've got in your booklet. Uh, you can fill this in properly if you didn't do so last lesson. As we go, yeah. So, let's kind of spot the difference. On the left, we've got shield volcanoes like Hawaii and Iceland uh, at hot spots and at divergent plate margins, similar kind of thing. Uh, and then on the right, we've got our steep-sided composite cone strato volcanoes which go boom, like Pinatubo that erupted in the Philippines in 91, and Mount St. Helens that went bang uh, in the USA in 1980. The formation of these two different types of volcanoes link and affect the type of lava, the viscosity of the lava, how explosive they are, and the type of hazards. So in order to understand why the risk and the hazard levels are different, and why the hazards are different, you need to understand kind of why the how the formations are different, yeah? So fill this in in full if you've not done so already, as we go. Right then, where should I start? So exciting. We'll have a look at a picture. I love my pictures. Shield volcano. This is Hawaii. I've stole it off internet. Right. What do we see? Gently slope sides. Yeah. These volcanoes, shield volcanoes, just like the word says, just like a soldier's shield back in back in Roman times. All right. Really curved. Gently sloped. Uh, and we can see we've got really runny lava flows. Uh, 
Hawaii is constantly erupting, all right? It's, uh, it sits on a hot spot on top of a mantle plume and that magma, column of magma keeps rising. It breaks the surface and it constantly erupts. So we call it an effusive eruption. Oh God, here's time to make a pillow for myself where I try and write using a mouse. It doesn't work. So I look like my daughter's writing. Here we go. Effusive. You can't ever forget that word because it's there. Uh, it's constant and effusive. On the volca volcanic explosivity index, these aren't that explosive. All right. Wonderful. Oh god, what's happening here? Right, let's get rid of that. What causes shield volcanoes then? Well, just like we looked at and we looked at to death, like the mid ocean ridge, convection currents in the mantle cause magma to rise. Uh, it's, basalt, it's a basaltic eruption. It's through, eating through kind of oceanic uh, crust. So magma rises through fissures, if you like. Uh, we get mid-ocean ridges and submarine mountains. Where these ridges build up, because they're effusively erupting, then we can get volcanic islands like Iceland. All right, You can still say as well that Iceland is a hotspot, because that magma's kind of rising up through uh, it's a divergent plate boundary or a constructive plate boundary but it's also a hot spot that one nice and short and sweet weren't it another graphic here got loads of them all shows the same thing magma from the mantle rises creates a volcanic island happy days what's this I've made here we go yeah, just a few facts and figures to help describe them, really. Uh, shield volcanoes are gently sloping. Yeah, they tend to form from just constant layers of lava erupting and then solidifying. Yeah, They're not explosive. So on the VEI scale, which we'll look at later on in the course, between 1 to 3 on the VEI scale, uh, we get fast-flowing, runny lava, it can flow for many miles. Uh, like I've already said, eruptions are frequent but gentle. <coughs> and we'll link it to the hazards a bit later on. So, where do we find these constructive boundaries and as volcanic hotspots? Hawaii and Iceland are your two that we're going to. Two go to examples here. Yeah? This is more of an A-level graphic, a bit more detail. You've got some extra facts and figures. You know, you decide what you want to try and remember. Uh, really wide base, 120 kilometers wide. Uh, yeah, built up of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lava layers that are solidified. You've got a few uh, different facts and figures about how hot the hot spot is and the mantle plume and stuff like that. Now Kilauea, which is Hawaii, it's been erupting continuously since 1983. Lovely bit of evidence that it's an eff it's effusively erupting. Yeah. And the sides are really gentle, gently sloped, less than 10 degrees. Happy days. Right. We're going to compare that to the boom, boom, boom of our steep-sided composite cone volcanoes that when they go off, get running. She could end up being brown bread. Right. So yeah, that's the Hawaiian recap. Have a nosy at that. But this is the bottom graphic here is what I'm interested in. And we can call these either composite cone or strato volcanoes. You decide which one you want to use. I don't care. The examiner doesn't care. 
but you need to choose one of them. So the formation then, what's happening? Back to our uh, plate tectonic theory. Everything links back to plate tectonic theory and tectonic hazards, unsurprisingly, because that's the name of the topic. Excuse my uh, sarcasm. Uh, yeah, so oceanic crust subducts under either the continental or the, another oceanic crust or plate where it goes into the asthenosphere or upper mantle. Temperature rises, partially melts, gas is released, pressure builds, uh, and then magma rises, and when it erupts, it erupts more violently. On the VEI scale, you know, we're looking at a five or a six here, which is getting like your big eruptions. Uh, Pinatubo was the second most explosive eruption of the 20th century, and I think Mount St. Helens was, a, was number one. Yeah, so, you know, if you watched a video of these two erupting, they go boom. But we're not going to say that in the exam, are we? Because we like to geographize. So that's the formation then. And what do we end up getting? Let's have a look at this bad boy. Yeah, the formation obviously affects the hazard types, right? Uh, so steep slopes above 10 degrees. We've got the, the composition. Uh, it's a mixture of previous eruptions of lava and ash. Lava and ash. It's not just runny lava, all right? So layers of ash and pyroclastic materials are kind of sandwiched in between layers of lava from previous eruptions. It's got a high gas pressure, often a high silica content. It's andesitic uh, lava, so yeah, oh, boom. Right then, happy days. Next bit. So how does the formation then link to the hazards? So I think it's worth just showing this. Uh, if we think of how hazardous volcanoes are, like, and we take a step back and look at it in context, and we compare volcanoes to droughts, floods, and earthquakes, they're not as hazardous. Droughts and floods are your two biggest global killers uh, in terms of natural disasters, all right? Earthquakes, volcanoes are in the top six, but volcanoes are less deadly. Than, than those three. A uh, bit of data, 250,000 people have died in volcanic eruptions in the last 300 years. Sounds like a lot of people. Compare that to drought and floods, it's in the millions, all right? But it does affect a lot of people. It might not kill them, but uh, it affects a lot, all right? A few distinctions in terms of key terms. A natural hazard is a natural event that has the potential to affect people, property, and the economy. Now, if we think of what effect can mean, what does the word effect mean? Well, it can kill people, it can injure people, uh, it can cause economic losses, loss of jobs in the economy, damage to properties, and it can cause people to relocate and become environmental refugees. So that's the potential. A disaster is where that potential is realized so yeah so people are affected the economy is affected it's past tense uh, a hazard just might do that it's got the potential to do it a disaster is when it when it happens a primary hazard is when the impact or effect of a hazard occurs as a direct consequence of that hazard so there's a, there's only one step between the hazard uh, between the event and the hazard, yep, or the impact and the hazard. A secondary hazard is uh, hazards that ha result from an initial event but happen later. So, for instance, a secondary hazard would be, for instance, earthquakes cause uh, ground shaking, causes buildings to collapse, which then spreads disease. The disease would be the secondary hazard, yep. Uh, earthquake causes uh, a mudslide, for instance. There's there's another step between the event 
and the end and result. Right then, so volcanic hazards. <coughs> In your booklet, we're going to kind of contrast these two uh, eruptions. You've got the hot spot. Iceland, which is a shield volcano which erupted in 2010 uh, and you've got Pinatubo or Mount St. Helens take your pick which went boom in either 1991 and 1980 respectively right then before we get on to that in your booklets you've got this and I think some of you might not have filled it in in lesson this year so now is the time to to uh, go back and do it. So, primary volcanic hazards. You've got ash and tephra. You've got pyroclastic flows. And you've got lava flows. So I'm going to talk through and, and give a bit of background on each one. And I've got my notes here because I'm getting old and my memory's failing me. So, tephra and ash. What can we say about that? Uh, write this in the box. Here we go. Uh, Large pieces of ash fall nearer to the volcano compared to finer ash. So, obviously, your finer ash, that's smaller particles, it can travel with the wind a lot further. So it affects a wider area. Uh, larger pieces of ash tend to uh, build up nearer to the eruption site. And what are the hazards? Well, the ash can be that heavy and that thick that it can cause roof, roofs to collapse and buildings to just basically uh, cave in on themselves because of the weight. So that's a, a hazard from a, and it can kill people if you breathe it in. Uh, the smaller pieces that travel for thousands of miles, as we're going to look at with the Iceland eruption in a minute, uh, they tend to cause more disruption. All right, So you're thinking in terms of aircraft engines, planes being grounded, you know, if we're in the UK and Iceland erupts, yeah, we might see a bit of ash. Might, you know, sort of uh, dirty our washing that's hanging out to dry on the line. But it's not going to really kill us, is it? It's just a bit of disruption. Yep. Uh, pyroclastic flows, then, the secondary primary volcanic hazard. This is the most deadly. So if we're assessing volcanic hazards, put a little note. Most deadly of all the hazards. Uh, what is it then? It's dense, hot rock, lava and ash that, that, that is fast flowing. It's up to 700 degrees centigrade. So if you think a kettle boils at 100 and that would burn you if you spill boiling water on your skin. You've got this mixture of hot rock, lava, ash moving down the side of a mountain uh, at hundreds of miles an hour and it's 700 degrees in temperature why is it so deadly because you can't outrun it and that's that's the main reason yeah if you were there when 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 it comes down the side of that volcano you're, you're brown bread basically uh, it's just going to incinerate you from the inside out uh, not a, not a very nice death to be honest the third one lava flows now Depending on the viscosity of the lava uh, and, and how runny it is will determine how fast it flows. So a couple of facts and figures, make sure you get these down. It's, surprise, surprise, very hot, uh, up to 1200 degrees centigrade. All right. It can take years to cool in some cases, uh, but up to 1200 degrees centigrade. If you stand on it, it's gonna it's gonna melt you basically. You're gonna you're gonna turn into a fireball. Uh, it's not as hazards go that much of a threat because it moves slowly, so you can outrun it. And also, the flow is quite predictable. You know where it's gonna go. Uh, so it does. It's not a big killer, but it destroys property, buildings, and farmland, productive land, businesses if if they happen to be in the in the vicinity, but. Uh, not many people actually build a house where lava's gonna flow because uh, yeah, it'd be a bad idea, wouldn't it? Right, your secondary hazards then, lahars. 
a famous example, Nevada del Ruiz. Uh, it's a secondary hazard, just like with Jolkal Alps. And both these kind of involve an element of water, I guess. So what, what are lahars? Masses of rock, mud and water that travel quickly down the sides of a volcano. So it's a mixture, yeah? If you've had torrential rainfall or a typhoon or a storm and a volcano erupts at the same time, then, you know, that mixture of ash, mud and water, uh, yeah, it, it, it's quite a killer, actually. Uh, floods at tens of metres a second. Again, the speed, they are fast, so you can't outrun them. At our interest, go on YouTube and just type in Lahar, watch a video of these things. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get a picture in your head of what they are and why they kill people. Uh, eruptions can melt snow or ice quickly on the mountains or caught in combination with a typhoon or a tropical storm or a rain event uh, plus a volcano erupting. That's when the, the risk level increases as well. The second secondary volcanic hazard is a Jolkal Alp. And obviously you've got this volcanoes are hot, the lava's hot, the magma's hot. Uh, it can melt, when it erupts, it can melt the glacier that's on, on the side of the volcano uh, and snow, and then it causes sudden floods. Again, these are quickly, water tends to flow quicker than mud. Uh, yeah, it's a mixture of water, rock, gravel, ice uh, that can flood and kill people, damage land property and infrastructure. Yeah, so the heat melts glaciers and then that, uh, yeah, like a melting ice dam which can cause a sudden flash flood. All right. So there, your three primary and two secondary volcanic hazards. Now, another thing we need to look at at A-level is something called the aerial extent, all right? And all that means, it just means the area moving out from the eruption site that's affected by each hazard. So here we've got a, a graph. Uh, the long reach of primary impacts from the source of the volcano it does to me look like a log scale, so one kilometer, 10 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 1,000, 10,000. And if you look at the aerial extent, obviously tsunamis uh, can be triggered by volcanoes, and their aerial extent is across the world's major oceans, which could be tens of thousands, well, thousands of miles. Really, uh, volcanic gases that are emitted that has an effect on climate change affects the whole planet and kind of ash, uh, fine ash, really fine, can affect yeah, the whole planet as well if, 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 if it's carried by the wind. Coarser materials tend to, tend to like we already discussed, just affect places nearer to the volcano. And then we've got, you know, the, the distance for, for each of the different ones. So what we've got here, lahars and floods up to 100 kilometers. Uh, Pyroclastic surges, most common, around about 10 kilometers, but can can affect people further away from that. Uh, lateral blast and lava bombs, pretty close, within 10 kilometers. So yeah, the, each one of the primary and secondary hazards has an aerial extent for the distance it can reach and cause impacts. Yeah? When you're assessing which hazards are more kind of damaging or significant, then this is just one of the criterias, all right? But it's not everything because, I mean, let's have a look. So if we look at this graph and we say, right, I'm going to make a judgment that fine ash is the most, it's, it's the most significant uh, hazard of a volcanic eruption because it covers a wide area. Well, yeah, you could say that, fantastic, but is it likely to kill anybody? Yeah, how severe are the impacts going to be from that? I'd argue probably not not very, so you need to evaluate precisely when you do that. Pyroclastic flows, for instance, are the most deadly, kills the most people, but maybe it's if you evacuate and you get warning, you know, they're only really deadly up to around 10 kilometers away. So 
you've got to weigh up a few different factors. Right. Next. Uh, yeah. I mean, a bit of research to apply all of this. Uh, two contrasting case studies in your booklet. You've got your uh, QR codes, or you've got the internet. Use the power of Google. I mean, these are big eruptions. Kind of, you'll find loads of information on them. So yeah, just fill in your comparative kind of case study card. Two or three bullet points: facts, figures, data. Three D. See in three D. Remember, detailed data. Uh, yeah, you'll find that Iceland very different types of hazards to Pinatubo. All right. Iceland, mainly ash and tephra that, that were the primary hazard. Uh, Pinatubo, very different. So I want you to go away and kind of pull together the theory of the formation, uh, understanding of the different types of primary and secondary hazards, the areal extent, to, to kind of get an overall picture of uh, why these two eruptions were very different all right on the right just here you've got yeah th that's a picture of the pyroclastic flow coming down the side of the mountain from Pinatubo uh, I wouldn't like to be this geezer or gal in the car I try to outrun one uh, I hope they've got a fast car so they're going to be incinerated uh, that's Pinatubo going boom and this is an example of fine ash of thicker ash which can build up to such an extent that it causes buildings to collapse if it's kind of meters thick in some cases. And this is an example of a lava bomb or a volcanic bomb that's been blown sky high uh, by Pinatubo because it's a very explosive eruption. I think it was five on the VEI scale. Uh, and then they solidify. Now, if you can imagine thousands of these lava bombs raining down on you, uh, oh dear, you're not going to be in a very good state. This map just shows, yeah, the disruption to air travel, uh, aircraft engines, and kind of how the wind dispersed the ash cloud, and it affected large parts of, uh, or lo large amount of Europe. Incidentally, in 2010, I booked a holiday to H Hagada in uh, Egypt, and I was looking forward to my all-inclusive bit of snorkeling on the Red Sea and Iceland 2010 happened and I ended up getting my money back I got cancelled on uh, and ended up driving to North Wales to get the ferry to Ireland so we had an holiday in Ireland instead and on that note adios <laughs>